Howdy, I'm B, and let me welcome to the Beer Snobs Radio Show. We are a bunch of friends who are not experts, but we know what we like in beer. Our definition of a beer snob is someone who just won't drink craft beer. So sit back and listen to us blind review beers on the Beer Snobs Radio Show. Calling all beer snobs, how you guys doing tonight? I am B, and to my left is... Hey guys, this is Brian with Jerk Life. Across the table, Damon. And I need to remind you guys that we have a beer of the month. So, you know, started October, we did a whole bunch of beers last month, and we always want to let you guys know about the beer that we think was the best thing we drank all month long. Now, Most like, best recommended by all three of us. Now, yeah. this isn't a competition between beer styles or a competition over what's the prettiest. We just think this is the beer we think you should go out, spend some good money on, and enjoy. Yeah. And that beer is Negro Modelo. Yeah. Right. That, that black lager from Mexico was one of the best things we had. And we did uh, six different beers or five different beers last month? Uh, no, I think we did. I think we did four. I think it was just four. Just no. four? Yeah, I think it was just four. We just four four beers. And, you know, we want to let you, after out of those four beers, this is the one we can wholeheartedly agree. You should go spend money and, yeah. and try Nothing to, came close. Nothing really yeah. came that close to it. But it's a solid beer. Yeah, it's and awesome. it's, it, it's crazy because you usually, we try these newer beers, these crazier flavors, but this is a classic. The, the Negro Modelo is is one of the best beers that come out of Mexico, and they've been making it for a really long time. I feel like it's been at least since the 70s, at least. I think it's been even longer, but I mean, Probably. the history is more like, you know, they, they actually got this recipe like they did from uh, Modelo from, from Europe, from Germany. They got the original black, uh, the black lager recipe and brought it over and started brewing it in Mexico. And yeah, it just took off. And I, th- I really think it's a really unappreciated beer for being as excellent as it is. Oh, well, we appreciate it a lot. This was a yes. great beer, and this is why it won beer of the month. But now we got beer news with Damon. Damon, what do you got for us this week? All right. Well, let's see. Starting off from thehill.com, this story is by Tim Devaney. Beer fight brewing over EPA rule. Uh, a battle is brewing in the beer industry over a new regulation from the EPA that spells out the agency's authority to regulate bodies of water. Uh, dozens of small craft breweries such as Sierra Nevada and New Belgium are rallying behind the EPA's proposed Waters of the U.S. rule, arguing it will help ensure that they have clean water for their products. But farmers who supply beer ingredients like barley, wheat, and hops say the rule has the potential to massively cut production on their lands, raising beer prices in the process. The divide has put trade groups for the beer industry in a tough spot, caught between what one industry lobbyist describes as competing interests. Obviously, water is a major element to beer, uh, but hops and barley are pretty darn important as well, says uh, Bob Peace, CEO of the Brewers Association, which represents thousands of small craft brewers and some farmers. OK, here's what I got to say about this. Anything that makes my beer more expensive is a bad thing. And yeah. I'm out. Yeah, this sounds like it's going to make craft beer expensive right off the bat. Yeah. And it's uh, it's just there's already such problems with droughts going on right now, especially in, uh, you know, middle America and, and uh, you know, where a lot of this stuff is grown. All across, uh, you know, the the Midwest, like it's already bad enough. We're already facing droughts, and you know that's just going to raise the price of everything. Yeah. But now the whole uh, waters of U.S. rule, it, I don't know. I don't know. Um, they, they proposed a water rule in March, arguing it needed simply uh, to clarify the agency's authority over small bodies of water, such as tributaries that feed into larger lakes and rivers. Um, yeah, it's business groups that are that are criticizing the or the rule as overreach. Um, saying it could lead to burdensome regulations on private property owners. I can see this driving the price of craft beer up significantly, yeah. considering that it takes about two and a half gallons of water to make one gallon of beer. Yeah, this is uh, their concern is is that without further EPA regulation, uh, the small streams that feed into large bodies of water could potentially pollute the lakes and rivers where breweries get their water. And so that's that's the reason uh, behind uh, the lobbying effort for brewers who are pushing for the clean water. Okay, so it, it's still a lack of water. It's yeah. going to be polluted water. It's still a lack of water. Yeah. Uh, Though breweries take steps to make sure they're not selling dirty beer, those safeguards can be expensive and affect the taste of the products. I think that's pretty much what it comes down to is uh, if... It sounds like water chemistry. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you start off with. If you can get your water chemistry balanced for the style of beer you're making, yeah, then you're good. Nobody will even notice. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah this is why breweries say it's important to start with clean water. Something they hope the EPA's rule will deliver. Yeah, so it's it, it sounds like the brewers are all for the protection of clean water for their products, so they don't have to buy more equipment in order to in order to purify dirty water, which is all they'll have access to. 
Yeah. But then they're arguing the uh, the people that own the crops are arguing because they want the clean water for themselves. And then they're going to threaten that if they have to go through other sources, that they're going to raise the price of the materials. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah, it's it's kind of a, just everyone's getting fucked either way. Either way, I mean, it seems like people forget like we live in a desert. Yeah, <laughs> like most yeah. of this country is pretty uh pretty barren, <laughs> especially on the western side of the country. Oh hell yeah! But uh, yeah. What do you think, B? You just don't raise my beer prices. <laughs> uh, dude, pretty soon it'll be like oil, you know, fuel. Do you remember like when like uh, high school, you remember like they used to have 99 cent sales for fuel? Yes. You, a gallon of gas was 99 cents. I remember, my, yeah. I remember the cheapest I got it was 83 cents. Yeah. Now it's like what? 390 and you're like, ah, that's not bad. I, yeah. I can swing it. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it seems, it seems that the, the farmers, the farmers themselves uh, just think that they can regulate themselves and they don't need the EPA to regulate. Although I don't know. Sometimes it's better to have a government regulation to protect uh, than to, because sometimes people will cut corners if who, they don't think anyone's looking. Who knows? Last time I heard we were paying people not to grow food. So that's yeah. true. Yeah. Well, yeah, they were, they were paying them to not grow it instead of what we used to do, which was give a government subsidy so that they could just push more product and then sell that product back to the people for a cheaper price. That's right. High fructose corn syrup. Yep. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's story number one. And uh, here is story number two. A little loftier. Uh, according to GQ, the 50 best craft beers every man must try. According to GQ. Give me the top five. I wonder how well I've done. Let's let's see what they think. That's one uh, of the top five. Well, let's see. They say the best. This is they're going in uh, the groups. The best dark beers. And this is uh, their expert, Paul Fippen of uh, Duck Rabbit. Never heard of, of him. Duck Rabbit Brewing. No, he sounds him. legitimate. No, okay. he doesn't. Uh, <laughs> Any place called Duck Rabbit Brewing, I'm not drinking that beer. Uh, let's see. I could, I could give you a, a lowdown on this guy, but I'll just say what he thinks. Uh, Ale Smith Speedway Stout. Oh, that's good. Not dude. bad. Yeah. McOslin St. Ambrose Oatmeal Stout. Never heard of it. I don't think I've had that. Outer Banks Brewing Station Company Rose, or Compass Rose, sorry. More than never is. heard of it. New Glarus Off the Bach. Who? Uh, I, th- I might have had New Glarus. It's Norwegian. No. Uh, and Bell's Expedition Stout. Bell's isn't shipped to California, is it? No, I don't think so. No. It's okay. a Midwest. It's a Midwest, Midwest yeah, beer. Bell's is, yeah. That's that's what they suggest for that. Let's see the next uh, the next set here. I feel like the the author was in uh, possibly New York, some sort of eastern. I think state. he's a mid mid. Uh, no, I think he's a uh, mid the country. All right, because he still was able to get uh, Elway. Uh, Best. Speed, oh speed yeah, stout. Speedway. Yeah. Best herbal beers, and these are decided by Jim Woods of Mataveza. Uh, let's see, Professor Fritz Bream, thirteenth century Groot beer. That sounds like the most ridiculous shit I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. Old Never. school Groot is packed with herbs, bay, ginger, caraway, anise, and others, unfiltered and refermented in the bottle with a touch of wild yeast. But through the potpourri, Jim says, the bay really pops. It's lemony character brought out by a bit of tang from lactobacillus. Ooh. That That's sounds the interesting. Sour, uh, the sour, uh, what's it called, isn't it? Yeah, a l- yeah. little bit sour and, yeah, f- finishing off the uh, fermentation in the bottle. It's always a nice touch. Is one called a Moonlight Working for Tips? I like the name. Mm. Yeah, a uh, multi brown ale brewed with redwood tips, plucked with the bre- from the brewer's Sonoma County backyard. Every time I take a sip of this beer, this guy pictures a brewmaster running around in a loincloth scavenging in the forest. I don't want it now, so I don't know what brewmasters look like. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say that's a little kinky. Yeah, I know. Uh, Dupont's uh, Pasca Rustica. No, no, I haven't had that. Mill Valley Beer Works Botanical Series. No. Uh, Gaglier CVBA, uh, Gaglier. It's a peppy carbonation, keeps the harsher notes of Gale and Bay at well, Bay. Uh, model of subtlety, Jim says, a great gateway Groot. No, yeah, it's lost on me. Yeah, okay, let's go. Let's go with these the next are some one. highfalutin beers. Uh, the best Stein filling quenchers. Uh, this is from Bryant Golding of Rheingeist, uh, Sierra Nevada Summerfest. Okay, I had it. I don't know if that's like a Stein quencher. No shit, right? Yeah. A uh, Weehan uh, Stefaner Pilsner. Wein Stefaner? Okay. Wein Stefaner? Wein Stefaner's pretty wrong. good. Yeah, Wein Stefaner's good. Three Floyd's Gumball Head. Oh, I haven't had the luxury of having three Floyd's. Yeah, they, they you can't get it out here. Uh, a bouquet of peach, mango, and apricot. A tantalizing du- a duet of sweet and bitter. 
Oh no, it's three Floyds. It's like people fucking crave that stuff. They covet yeah. three Floyds. Yeah, no growler yeah. refills. Have you heard that? Really? Yeah. They, uh, they don't even let you uh, refill a growler. It has to be a brand new one. Wow. Brand new bottle every time. Uh, double Mountain Vaporizer. Sounds like a pot strain. That uh, sounds like something from Colorado. It's a Canadian grown Pilsner malt with uh, delicate American Challenger hops. <laughs> Those Canucks. Sugar Crazy. cookie, lemon, and pine. Wacky. And uh, Moonlight Reality Czech Pilsner. Uh, the other side of the Pilsner coin, this one is a spicy bohemian style, grassy hops, and snappy rye cracker malt. Wow, Reality Check's just kind of a weird name for a Pilsner. Reality Check. But it, it, it sounds hoppy, is that right? Yep. Oh. Eh. Uh, the best pub style sessions, this one by Dave McLean of uh, Magnolia Pub. Uh, Timothy Taylor Landlord. No. Fuller's London Pride. Mm, I've eh. that. Uh, uh, it's okay. Alaskan Summer Ale. Alaska oh, that was pretty good. Uh, and Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Oh, yeah. The, yeah, the basic, yeah that's the basic. That's the corner. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, I think I'm going to do a couple more of these. Let's see. Uh, what sounds good? The best imports? No. No. What else do you got? Because uh, Orville Trappist is on here. Yeah. And uh, Omnipolo Nebuchadnezzar. That sounds good. It's a Swedish IPA. That's funny. I was thinking of uh, the Poyo. Okay, chicken. Nebuchadnezzar. Okay, the, the ship Old from uh, the Matrix. Some uh, sort of a weird chicken spaceship. Best cask beers. Oh, dude, that could be good. Huh. Uh, That's all like one off. Dogfish though. Head 75 Minute IPA, which I haven't tried that one yet. Or the that, 75. That, I got two uh, of them at home. It's a blend from the 90 and the 60? Yeah. Yeah. See, uh, any more uh, we recognize? No, not a lot here. Uh, let's see. I'll, I'll give it a couple more chance. See what else you got. I think I got the 75 Minute for $2 best beers to The best beers to age. Uh, Budweiser. Deschutes the Abyss. Local. The Abyss is a great oh, beer to age. Yeah, that is yeah. a good one. That's a great beer to age. Oh, even yeah. vertical. Alaskan Brewing Smoked Porter. I don't know if I want to age that one. Yeah, apparently, it's a good. It's good to smoke. Or it's I good. Mean, to, it's good to. Uh, is a good beer be- just because it's, 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 it's heavy. Heavy smoked, but I don't know what would happen if you age it. I mean, so it's smoke- at eighteen years old. Oh my god, it's like a smoky sherry. Wow. Oh okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This 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 list is. Uh, I don't know. It seems very uh, highfalutin. A little highfalutin, a uh, little, uh, it's knowledgeable enough. These people seem knowledgeable enough that seem to be making these choices. But, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that people just aren't going to get a chance to try, you know? Um, no, not an 18-year-old aged beer. Yeah, seriously. I mean, that that's literally sounds like it needs like a college fund. Like strong ales and barley wines. <laughs> Sierra Nevada Bigfoot, a recommended oh, oh, strong uh, ale and barley wine. Yeah, that is a good one. Hair of the Dog Adam. Hair oh, of the Dog, no. Actually, I have had it. And that's actually in downtown Portland. They're a pretty nice brewery. Yep. Um, yeah, it's uh yeah, just it seems like an interesting list. And I think if we had better connections to get more beer trading going on, it'd be interesting to try a lot of these. But I'm gonna start beer trading through Instagram. That's a good idea. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah, that's the, this is their opinion. GQ's opinion of beers, you have to try fifty of them. We're not going through every single one of them. That would take way too long. We got a beer in front of us. So uh that's it for beer news. Yeah. Oh, what is this? A beer of the show? Beer nice. of the show. Let's see what's up. Light brown color. Oh, nice aroma. Yeah, it's a little sweet. Kind of. The, the smell is sweet. Yeah. Not typical, though. Is that a little, just a bit of brandy? No. Just a touch? No, I don't pick brandy. It's, it's sour. It's, um, this beer's sour. And not sour beer, in a good way. You're saying the beer went sour? Yeah. I don't know, if, wrong. It is, if it is, I still like it. I kind of like it, too. Yeah, I yeah. don't. I kind of like it, too. So I'm right with this. I'm not, I'm not a fan. It tastes flat. That's the only problem is there's no head and it tastes flat. It tastes like if it actually had carbonation, it would be good. No, I'm just, I'm taking like, maybe, maybe this is, this was casked. Maybe uh, I'm trying to get what that is. A mistake. I don't, I don't think that this is a cask, um, but the flavors, they're very distinct and they're, they're, but they're, but they're blended so well. It's just, the problem is, is it's just no carbonation in this. Uh, uh, it's it's got one off flavor in there that kind of it just sticks out. It kind of it kind of tastes like honestly, this tastes like something I want to revisit because I don't think I don't think this is this is flat. This beer is fucking flat. I think it's just bad. And remember, well, no excuses for the beer. We we take it how it is. I know. Yeah. No, I'm just saying. I'm not. I'm not saying it's. I'm saying it's got a major major fault, but it should be better. I think it should be better. Yeah. But, this is sad. Yeah. Let's let's get to reveal. Yeah. This one just falls short. We have the Anderson Valley Brewing Company Boont Amber Ale. An amber, wow, and wow. Out, out, it's out of a can. Out of a, a fucking can. I, I wouldn't expect it to have lost uh, the kind of carbonation bite you'd expect. Or the flavor profile we're messed up on. I, yeah. That was weird. Let's, let's hear it. 
Amber Ale, 5.8, and Buck 79 a can. Balance is what makes Bunt Amber Ale so unique. Rich crystal malts give this beer a deep copper hue and contribute a slight caramel sweetness to the herbal spicy bitterness from carefully selected whole cone hops and impart a crisp, clean finish. Hints of sun-toasted grain, toffee, and fruity esters complement the mellow, noble hop aroma. No. This has got to be old. This has got to be old or something. I don't get this. No. no nothing. That did not taste like the description. Yeah, that tasted nothing like that. Yeah. That, that was weird. Was there I, a born on date? Well, no, it's a can. No, it's on the uh, bottom. There might be on the on bottom. bottom. Oh. I do not see it. I just see it says 15 on it. It's the only number I see on here. Well, these guys kind of do their own thing anyway. You know, they're... Yeah, they, honestly, they don't follow any trends. I think I think we have to put this on the try again list one day. Out of a bottle, out of a bottle if they have it in a bottle. They yeah. do. They do. Yeah, and we'll definitely have to try it again. Sometime. Anderson Valley does both bottle and can. Uh, their bottle, I remember having it a long time ago. It's not bad. This one just tasted off. Something did not feel right about this. I, I think I'm with you. It could have been old. Could have been very old. Yeah, and uh, something just didn't. It That's, wasn't mellowed enough or whatever. It's just yeah. sad. Um, so what, recommendations MB. No. Uh, yeah, I you know I feel like I've had this before and it's actually pretty good though. But I mean this but one, this try. Like, yeah, this try, something fell short. Something something happened. Try the other Anderson Valley stuff. It's usually good. Yeah, oh, no, yeah. I got I got to say like honestly, I I think I think it's uh, this beer tasted like it should have been something different, and if it tastes just flat in a can, it's so weird because I always remember people saying you know cans get hold of carbonation better and all that, but apparently not with this one. And maybe it's because it's old or something. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I, again, I want to try it again, but as of now, I can't recommend it. Yeah, I would definitely try it again. Anderson Valley kind of goes their own way. But it's, a, you, no, but you, it's a no from you too, right? Totally a no. I mean, have you heard of their, like, the language that they speak? No. Oh, it's crazy. No. Yeah, look it up on YouTube. Uh, they've got video after video of this like weird, unique language. And, and Well, the can is a bear with antlers on it. Yeah, drinking out of a, a lake or something. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's a it's a decent looking can. They're they're, they're nutty people, but I that didn't help it from getting a zero out of three at all. I want a bear with antlers. Yeah. So uh, th- we let's let's get back to talking about a better beer we should be drinking. Our beer of the month for this N- month, Negra Modelo. Negra Modelo. Try that one out. You're gonna love it if you haven't tried it. If you if you live under a rock for some goddamn reason and you've never seen it, go out and look for it. It's good stuff. Real good stuff. If you haven't stumbled across this beer, something's wrong. So, guys, I'm B from the Beer Snobs, and I'll see you at the bar. Hey, guys, this is Brian from Beer Quest, and the quest is only half the fun. This is Damon Beer Snobs. I'll feed the same. Calling all beer snobs. I am B, and you just heard one of our shows. Guess what else you can do? You can find us on the interwebs at Twitter, Facebook, G+, and we're on the Stitcher Radio Network. Be our friend on our social networks to find out what we're up to and find interesting beer articles we're releasing. If you want to advertise with the beer snobs, you can contact us at marketing at thebeersnobs.com. If you want to give us beer suggestions, you can find us at info at thebeersnobs.com or any of the social networks you can reach us. And as always, I'll see you at the Bye.